Welcome back to another episode of Senjin I.O. Promise to make this one extremely action-packed. Over 55% of the homes infected are is yours. Dear homeowner, homes infected with viruses or malware can lead to spoiled or poisoned food, water damage, and flood damage, even kitchen electrical and electrical fires. Security ex experts agree home virus and malware protection is necessary to reduce the risk of hackers and cybercrime tampering your refrigerator, water heater, thermostat, and more. With Fortress Protection Systems proactively sweeps, scans, detects, and repels intruders from all home appliances. Sign up for Fortresses, Fortress today and sleep better at night knowing you are protected by the best home dispense in the industry. That'd be pretty crazy if, if uh, viruses or malware could poison your food. Carbon detect target luminaire. We have a deal to create a highly portable infrared targeting device that automatically switches emitter modes based on range. At long range, the aiming laser is on. At mid range, the aiming laser switches to half power mode and turns on a 20 degree flood emitter. And at close range, it switches completely to a, a, a 60 degree flood. I've placed a copy of the table on your desk. As a mounted add-on for any type of any type of carbine weapon, it has a potential to do very well across government and law enforcement agencies. I'm going to nope right out right out of this one, if none of you mind. <laughs> All right, let's see. Carbine target illuminator radar out is a simple input connected to a miniature radar unit that indicates when it fires a radar ping. Radar in is a simple input connected to a miniature radar indicates when it receives a radar ping. Radar out and radar in. Laser is a simple output connected to a variable intensity infrared aiming laser. Flood 20 and 60 are simple outputs connected to flood illuminators with 20 and 60 degree beams. So I guess I can tell how far away it is based on the ping. So I got what, like one extra unit here. So therefore I wanted a, it's a close range. I got three units and it's at medium range and four units at far range. All right, so let's look at the manual because she said there's a manual. Insert describing the range goo. Don't let your operators get caught fiddling with rangefinder settings at the wrong moment. Today's aiming device for individual carbine rep weapons often features complex illuminators with multiple switches and dials, which can be difficult to operate in the dark or worse during an engagement. The P221, PP221, eliminates these issues by automatically snapping to three predefined settings optimized for common engagement distances. Radar range, time units, one or two, is it close? So the laser is off and the flood, the 60 degree flood is on. 60 degree flood is on. Two to four time units, or three to four time units. Laser is 50%. Laser is 50%. And 20, 20 degree flood is on. Five to six time units, lasers at a hundred percent. And the flood's off. Nice. Short range mode. For close quarter situations and room to room engagements, short range mode sets the flood light to a wide diffusion to illuminate the largest possible area without wasting power on the aiming laser. Mid range mode. For using a wide variety of urban environments, the flood light is adjusted to a narrower cone in order to project a Illumination towards the target area while the laser pointer receipt enables precise aiming. Long range mode. The high power laser with the lowest divergence used for outdoor situations or in situations with excessive non-natural ambient illumination. All right. Let's see, radar in and radar out. And there's all that stuff. So are these pins? Yeah, these are pins. And what are these? 
these button pins too. Yep. I wonder if we can drive over one of these things. Actually, we can't, they can't control the laser because uh, the laser has to go at 50%. Could control these two things separately with an X bus. I think you really want one unit to figure out the distance and then another unit to mess with the output based on that distance. The output would be a pin and then something like that. Something like that. Let's sleep into X1. It's available. Move X1 into ACC. Sleep one. Let's test if P radar N is P0. Test if P1 is 100. If it's not, we'll jump to sleep. And then sleep is sleep one. And if it is, we'll label that as count. And then we'll add one, sleep one, jump to count. Test if P1 is 100. If it is, we'll jump to done done we will move ac index three something like that let's test that all right so we got <clears throat> wait radar out better in backwards p1 and p0 get radar out so now we're adding one testing if it's 100 it's not so we're going to add another one and then we're jumping to done and we're moving to index three okay then we get two over there Let's watch the next one. I'm probably off by one. This should really be one, but who cares right now? I'll just mess with it over here. Um, four. Actually, I don't think I reset add. I don't reset, didn't reset it. Let's move zero into ACC. And let's set a breakpoint like right here. All right, so there goes ACC zero. One, two, three, four. So I got three. Yep. Okay. So it's just off by one. That's, I can deal with that. All right. Now, actually, let's see. I want to stop right here. Yep. Okay. So I have the ability to actually alter it right now. So I want to make sure my timing is correct. Okay, so now I just need to look at look at ACC, test if ACC, test if ACC is greater than, what was it? So it would be six to seven because I'm off, by, I'm, up, I'm up one. So I'm, let's test if I'm greater than six. If I am, then I'm going to move what is laser? Laser is 100, so move 100 into P1 and move 0 into X2 and then jump to sleep. And then I'm going to test if it's greater than um, 4. If it is, I'll move 50 
into P1 and then move. Um, I want to turn on the 20% flood, which is, I guess, 100. I have to test that and then jump to sleep. And that should be a plus. And then otherwise, it's the last condition, so I'll move zero into P1 and move one into X2. Something like that. Let's stop it right there. Okay, so is it greater than six? Nope, is it greater than four? Nope. All right, moving zero and one. Hey, that worked. That did not work. Drop that point, advance to there. And let's jump it through. So we got a four. So it should be, should be getting, it's really a three, three or four. So I'm testing if it's greater than four. but I, I'm off by one, but I need to adjust by greater than, so it's a three and a five as the numbers. Because I'm greater than, so I want, I want really five or six to be captured by this statement, but I'm up by one right here because I didn't bother or, um, subtracting one. And so greater than five means six or seven, which is really what this means, because I'm up by one. All right, let's try this, that should work. All right, that did work. And then this one we need to debug. Turn off that one. Okay, I'm at five, greater than five. We are in one, two, three, four. are on 100%. Guess it is. Guess it is just this two. Because it looks like so. It looks like it is counting. This is counting. This five to six is counting. Counting right here. One, two, three, four, five. That's why this is going to 100%. So just counting the immediate. So I'm actually correct over here. I'm not up by one. So I'm gonna say if I'm greater than four or greater than two. There we go. The magic of assembly instructions at work. Kind of high on production costs, but yeah. Maybe I'll look up one day uh, how do I get it cheap. Let's return to email and see what they say. We did it! You made us some kind of thing that goes on another thing that's made for killing people and helps them kill people even better. Yay, go us. Carl, I understand your concerns, but let's take this offline. <laughs> Alright, see you next time on Senjin.io.